Nice to be here. Nice to talk to you today. Okay, tell us a little bit about why lack of self-esteem is so prevalent among young people. Uh, among people, I think I think that's the first question. Well, I came out with the techniques which are part of timeline therapy because in the trainings and seminars we have lots of people come to us and ask questions like, you know, Ted, I've been harshly criticized by my father or by my mother or by my school teachers in my youth, and I know I've done a good job at the time, but I can't get over this, and I, and I realize it's followed me all along my whole life. That's why I have a profound lack of self-esteem. I always feel like I'm not good enough, and I pretend, I put on a face, but deep down inside I feel like I can't do it. Or, there were, or they say, well, there are many times in my life when I've been ignored or ridiculed or teased, and, and I didn't do anything wrong, but now I don't even dare to open my mouth and say anything. Well, you know, sometimes people say things like, I look around and see many other people who are happy, who are successful, but to be honest, I doubt that I can ever achieve anything like that. Besides all of the other conditions, like when you're born, who do you know? Your parents' financial situation, it's also take good, take good looks to make it. And look at me. One woman said, I remember hating to stand up in class at school to say something as it just froze and stood there, stood there like not being sure of what to say. Now, like then, I'm just not capable of speaking what's on my mind. What would people say if I say what I think? They'll surely laugh at me. What if they'll find out who I really am? A man shared this with me. I, I, have a, I can't have a relationship, he said, because I simply can't get myself to begin a conversation with new people. Because... I know I'm not attractive enough to them, and I find that I'm not confident about what, 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 what would they find interesting in me. Most people suffer to some degree a, a lack of self-confidence. It's, it's a fact of life. I was already experimenting with the issues of memories that contain lots of negative emotions and bad life experiences from the past, and how to get rid of the ones that wreck our lives, because they tend to stay with us. As you know, they stay with us for a long time, in many cases as long as we live. But I was convinced then, and I'm, and I'm more convinced now, that there are in fact ways of changing our beliefs about ourselves. And we can get rid of our lack of self-esteem quickly and easily. We witness this happening all the time in our seminars and trainings. There are many ways of getting rid of our fear, and, uh, and, and we can get rid of our fears of not being good enough, and we can do that quickly, and we can do that easily. You know, there are ways of changing our inability to say what we really want to say to our spouses, to talk to them, be capable of talking straight to our bosses. And this way, we don't have to take a long time. All these things are, are easy to do. There are ways to completely feel self-confident. There are ways to change our insecurities into self-confidence. Now, wait a second. You're saying that things that you come up with uh, that are part of a man's or a woman's personality, things that have been diagnosed as a, a psychological disorder, can all be lumped together with this issue of lack of self-esteem? Well, when, when you look at the way our society is and how many mental problems are diagnosed nowadays, and the number of people who are taking all sorts of medications for problems like social anxiety disorder or public phobias, the way our science has evolved today is to try and solve all of these problems by means of chemical input. Meaning you take a drug for the conditions you have, been diagnosed with, and, and, and that's okay, but there are other things you can do to help yourself in a different way, using other methods that are quick, they are fast, that are easy to do. Yeah, and, and the general belief is that if you, if you have low self-esteem, there is nothing you can do to change that. You basically you just have to live with it. That's right. That's right. All right. And you can mostly pretend that all is well because no one really knows what, what you're actually hiding on the inside. That's right. Right, right. So the general belief is it's not serving us. It's not serving us very much, is it? Because when we have this belief, we become more and more, we become more and more victim of our behaviors, which are learned or acquired. We're not born with those behaviors. Now think of it, when you were a baby, you didn't think of yourself as being not good enough, did you? You did not think of yourself in a good or in a bad way. You did not think, oh, I'm the greatest person in the world when you burped your lunch on a mommy's shoulder. You did not, yeah, you did not worry when you wore a diaper that your bum was too big or that your legs are not straight and you look weird. That's right. <laughs> Our lack of self-esteem is not inborn. No. And yet there's a prevalent belief that there's nothing we can do about it. This is how we are. And the best it gets is when we spend years and years and years trying to overcome this problem. What? Years? What a waste of life. You can do this much more quickly. Right. It's not something you are. It's something you do. Therefore, it can be changed. And it can be changed now. Okay, yes. These things can be changed right now, and yet millions of people all over the world with a lack of self-confidence 
control every single aspect of their lives. Self-esteem is not who you are. Self-esteem is not who you are. Therefore, low self-esteem does not have to stay with you forever. Think of it, every single aspect of our lives has a direct relationship to the way we feel about ourselves. We create happy, intimate relationships because we have the self-assurance or the confidence to start a dialogue with those who are attracted to. We also have the self-assurance that at some point it's okay to accept a committed relationship. If we are in a relationship, then we have the confidence to love them and know that it's okay to be loved in return. What's, what's the difference between successful people and people that are not successful? Those who succeed do so because they truly believe they will succeed, even if they don't yet know how. They just know they will. There are people who are hard hit by the economy, and yet they've already bounced out of it. What you do right now, your career, the ways others relate to you, the way you are perceived by your friends, by your family, by your co-workers, the way you carry yourself, who are the people you hang out with, the amount of money you make, your love life, they are all a direct result of your self-esteem. Self-esteem is nothing more than how you feel about yourself, and nobody is born feeling in a certain way about themselves. We begin to learn to have self-esteem, or not, as a result of our environment. We are taught by mom and dad, by our relatives, by our friends, by our school teachers and first relationships how we are supposed to think about ourselves. E even so, even so, let's say you had a good upbringing and your parents encourage you to have a good self-esteem and you grow up with a good dose of it. So you now have a healthy, healthy dose of self-esteem. But what if at some point you run into a situation that completely changes the way you think about yourself? Something unexpected, surprising, and, and you're unprepared. Maybe something so shocking that in many cases it can take years or even a lifetime to reverse the damage done to your self-esteem. Many people realize that they have negative lack, uh, uh, lack of self-esteem or negative self-image, while others secretly spend their entire lives trying to compensate for their lack of self-esteem and doing the best to prevent it from controlling their lives. So you're saying that these people are not sure what the underlying problem actually is? Exactly. They don't understand what is it that blocks them. Self-esteem is all about how much you feel valued, loved, accepted by others, but also how much we value, love, and accept ourselves. Do I feel good about my body, about how smart I am, when I walk down the street or when I go to work every day, or when I'm in an intimate relationship with my partner? People with healthy self-esteem feel good about themselves. People with low self-esteem may feel like no one's willing to like them, or no one will accept them, or that they can't do anything well. Many times, because of this low self-esteem, they feel that they need to cheat and manipulate others into getting what they want because they feel they could not succeed otherwise. Have you ever seen a stranger in public or at a party who would, you really would like to meet, but were too nervous or shy to approach them? That could be your future life partner, the perfect other, and life just made it possible for you to meet, but it would never happen because of your lack of self-confidence, self-esteem, and belief in yourself. It's, it's all the same thing anyway. It makes you, it makes you feel the same way. Yes, it is. How, yet how many, people, how many people do you know that hate their jobs? Oh. They just go there every <laughs> Monday morning because it pays the bills. They would rather not go there. They'd rather not do it, but they feel like they have no choice. People with healthy self-esteem are not staying in a job they hate. They seek out jobs they really like, or maybe they even start their own businesses. They know they'll succeed at whatever they want in life. So if you're stuck in a job you don't enjoy, if you're afraid to ask for that promotion, if you dread going to work every day, most likely this is a direct result of lack of self-esteem. It's a feeling that you don't deserve something better. Are you still faithful to the dreams you had when you were young? Think of it. Mm, I, I think so. <laughs> so you're not very sure. But let's say you said, yes, that's good. But are you doing something about them? Are you continuously taking action to follow your dreams? Do you deep down still believe that they'll come true? Because if you don't, you lost the self-esteem you used to have when you were younger. Self-confidence is the determining fact. People who feel self-confident and have a healthy self-esteem, regardless of their age, gender, body shape, etc., will actively pursue them and achieve their dreams because they believe they can. People who lack self-confidence, they have a low self-esteem, they won't take action because they have a false sense that there is no point in even trying. They will fail since they feel they are not good enough. So I gather that self-esteem is the defining factor in whether or not you live the life that you want to live. Absolutely. And there is good news though. Even if you struggled with low self-esteem problems your entire life, you can completely change the way you see yourself. And you can begin to live a happy, confident life. And the answer is probably a lot easier than you think. 
I know very well, I had a time in my life when my pretty good self-esteem was put to a great test. And I was lucky to have two parents who loved me and they did their best to make me feel appreciated and loved. After that, once I grew up into adulthood, things started going haywire. I felt so bad that I hated being me. I had a very negative attitude. I was blaming everyone else for my bad luck. And I was jealous of other men who had happy, fulfilling jobs and happy, fulfilling relationships. Surely, during that time, I didn't appreciate myself at all. I started talking to acquaintances and friends, but they said to me, get used to it. This is how it is. There's nothing you can do about it. I didn't want to accept the victim position, so I started doing affirmations. An affirmation would say, you can do it, or you're lovable, or you're worthy, or you're powerful, and I repeated those. But truthfully, I, I didn't feel like that when I did it. I wanted desperately to feel this way, but I wasn't. Uh, I, I said the affirmations, you know, and I, and I, I finally went out and bought a, a, a tape set that had affirmations covered by ocean waves. And so I'd hear the ocean waves, and then the back, and this was one of those affirmation sets that had 50,000 affirmations per second, layered in in different levels, you know? They were layered in in different levels. And so I'd hear the waves, like that. And then underneath that, it'd be going like this. And, I, and I'd wake up in the middle of the night and the earphones would be wrapped around my neck. Uh, it, didn't, it didn't work very well. So that, all of that actually sent me on a quest to find something that actually does work. There are lots of things out there that could improve your self-esteem. But some require taking pills, and some require 20 years of meditation, and some get short-term results but not long-term results. But none of them seem to be what I needed. And all of that sent me into a quest to find something that actually does work. And that's what you teach in your seminars now? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Because you seem to have snapped out of that. Um, you have a great relationship, a beautiful, uh, wonderful career, um, which fulfills you. Yes, we do. And we know that regardless of what happened to you in the past, so can you. You already know better than anyone else how much your lack of self-esteem impacts your daily life. It affects everything. Self-esteem is the defining factor that makes people feel lonely. If you want to feel loved, the first thing you need to do is love yourself. If you want to stop feeling like you struggle to get by, regardless of how you do, and become successful, you need to let go of not being good enough. For example, childhood trauma can have a major impact on self-esteem and the confidence of a grown-up. There are so many ways in which we can experience childhood trauma, and I'm not talking about major trauma like sexual abuse or physical abuse, or like war or severe neglect or rape, etc. I'm talking about situations where the parents unintentionally create severe emotional pain because they ignore their children so much that the children just feel alone. And this is because the parents were too busy dealing with their own stressful situations, their own issues, or maybe they were dealing with other siblings. So children grow up as highly introverted with a reserved nature and they're pretty poor at making friends with the opposite sex. Lack of self-esteem can lead to inability to understand what it's like to be in a relationship with members of the opposite sex be it men or women. Right, right. The Adverse Childhood Experiences, ACE study, has demonstrated that clearly that the childhood trauma can lead to a poor quality of life later on. It did. Extremely low self-esteem, thus lack of motivation, lack of desire for anything, a deep feeling of unworthiness, and thinking you don't deserve anything good in life. See, lack of self-esteem could damage your personal and intimate relationship completely. Think of this. Part of the advice given by sex counselors is for you to have confidence in yourself and your sexuality. They say that the key to a great intimate relationship is to have the confidence in yourself. But then you scratch your head and say, but how do I do that? I feel like crap about myself. I should, I should have self-confidence and self-esteem, but I don't. And that's the problem. If you're a woman, you hope to God that he will be done quickly so you can put on your pajamas because your bum's not looking good. And you're not as skinny as you used to be, and you cannot bear the idea of him looking at your body because you're one of these people preoccupied with all the major and minor flaws in your physical features. You feel you don't have the legs for short skirts, and you can wear only some type of pants because the fashionable ones make your hips look too big. And this is all part of your physical insecurity, but it's not only about physical insecurity. In our trainings, we meet women who are very successful, with great careers, who still worry about their abilities, discounting their thriving careers and a reputation in good standing or maybe more than 20 years. If guests are, come, guests are coming for dinner, they worry that their home won't be pleasing, that their food won't be pleasing, that the conversation won't be sufficiently entertaining. They worry con continuously. What's present is the same self-doubt that derailed Julia Roberts' character in Pretty Woman. Think of it. There is a scene there where she's telling the wealthy businessman played by Richard Gere that nobody ever plans to be a hooker.
that she fell into this line of work because she didn't think much of herself. Gear observed that she's a special person with a lot of potential and capabilities, and she replies, the bad stuff is easier to believe.